Hello there. So this is Stephen Northington or Price Northington. I'm going to be discussing the multiple streams framework as presented within the textbook. Uh, it's the first chapter and I'm going to be discussing the multiple streams framework as a public policy analysis and kind of discuss the general structure and the framework that the framework as a whole provides and kind of the analysis that goes into it. So we're going to discuss like a lot of ranges of issues that how it can like generally apply at different levels and like ranging from the subnational to the international. And there's a lot of criticisms at the moment that are being worked through in terms of the analysis. And but to start, we're going to be discussing the um, assumptions, structure, applications, limitations, and the future development of the framework, as you can see at the bottom of the PowerPoint, so that's where we're going to be starting. Uh, generally, the assumptions within uh, the multiple, strain forks, as multiple streams framework includes ambiguity, time constraints, problematic policy preferences, unclear technology, fluid participation, and stream uh, independence. So first is ambiguity. Uh, ambiguity um, assumes on some level that uh, policy making isn't an exactly rational problem solving that you know you'll see in a lot of different uh, economic and political analysis that they're ag acting in a purely rational format instead of like understanding that human beings are complicated and have a lot of complication and sometimes a lot of lack of clarity in the ways they engage with politics and as a whole the policy process because of this ambiguity, there can kind of form a wide variety of solutions to given problems that exist. Um, there's the issue it comes is it's vague and shifting. So there's a lot of different solutions that pop up at different circumstances and different occasions at these kind of all issues kind of run against. So the next one is the kind time constraints. Uh, basically, policymakers are not always working with the luxury of time on their hands. So basically, um, time constraints can kind of occur um, often. Basically, in a sense, is there's always like another fire to put out. There's always another th thing to deal with in the policy process. So basically, on an individual level, you're going to be limited in your ability to respond to each of these issues, but they can be technically improved due to like organizations and like government models, like dividing labor. This way you can kind of as a whole organize more effectively. Um, the issue that comes is because so many issues require attention, there's often a, like a sense of urgency that appears and for the poly policymakers in the sense to strike while the iron is hot. So it's like if a fire is happening in California, then people will want to respond to that policy issue on an immediacy as compared to like healthcare. And the issue comes is those things are both very important, but one has a bit of that uh, immediacy of the issue. So basically is policymakers can be assisted with uh, by organizations and large scale models, but still are ultimately limited and can only consider a small number of issues while like United States governments can do a lot of like work with its bureaucracy and its uh, different like legislatures and all these different members of the organization that can help resolve a lot of the issues in a, a like a time or timely and effective sense than like an individual can. Next is the problematic policy preferences. Um, Preferences emerge due to like the previous discussed assumptions out of ambiguity and time constraints. Uh, basically, it's how an, like a different member of the policy process uh, thinks about an issue and the information that's kind of available to them. So basically, this means that um, a actor, or in this, this case, like a, per a person involved in this process, uh, their preferences are not like a fluid like a continuous and consistent stream and they're very complicated and basically is it creates a lot of inconsistent but also constantly fluctuating policy preferences based on the circumstances and the availability of data and like the different aspects of uh, tools available to that person this means uh, that as a whole the, the clarity which policymakers have uh, to specific policies is not always clear but there's also the issue of unclear technology and basically is um, if 
a member of an organization is only aware of their individual responsibilities. They can only exhibit a, a small amount of knowledge. So it's sometimes the over -speci uh, specialization is like if you're working in a factory setting, if you only know of your piece, you can do your piece, but it, it hurts your ability to help contextualize the whole concept that you're working towards. So it, it may like result in a like issue with uh, like how you're forming the policy. So, like, basically, uh, different people are going to be dealing with different boundaries and different, like, bureau bureaucratic turf battles that are all having different agencies and departments occurring and contesting with each other. So if they're not aware of this other agency, it can cause conflicts and interests and make it, um, make it more difficult for them to communicate their needs and resolve their preferences together. And then fluid participation is also complicated by unclear technology. Um, it's defined as the composition of decision-making bodies subject to constant change, either because it varies with the concrete des decisions to be made or turnover is high. Basically, um, there's a lot of different times where different members of the policy process are going to be involved in interacting at different places. And so these uh, mechanisms basically indicate that different people are going to be having different thresholds of participation or are going to be drawing back and devote to different decisions at different moments. So it's like if you have one policymaker who's focusing on this specific issue and is having a high degree of participation, they're not going to be focusing as much on another issue that another person may have draw more attention to. And so basically is participation is much more fluid and not as consistent in terms of different issues. And stream independence basically, uh, let me make sure I have this right. Yep, yep, that's another mention of the assumptions. I just wanted to check myself. But basically, it assumes that the uh, different processes or the streams, as it's narrating here, uh, they, are assume, they are assumed to be independent in the political system. It also assumes that political problems, policy solutions, politics develop mostly independent of each other. Uh, problems are often um, occurring regardless of the political climate and the political developments within it or the available policy tools. So basically, as a government may not have the available policy tools in order to resolve the issue, but as a whole, problems don't really give a care about it. You know, they don't really have concerns about these issues. And so basically is political institutions and policymakers having to respond to a wide range of issues that they may or may not have tools developed in order to resolve and ultimately have to both play with those issues but also have to play with each other and uh, work towards building different consensus or bargain and have to be very fluid in how or like it says dynamic here but it's basically you have to be adaptable in how you respond to these issues and basically, um, actors in these and like policy streams aim to gain independence, acceptance for policy solutions, while political street members build on lobbying group mobilization. There's a different set of tactics that people may approach in different contexts. And so, with all those assumptions aside, we're going to basically move on to the broad general structure. Um, as previously discussed, the first notion is stream independence. Um, Basically, is if an issue is to gain some sort of prominence and kind of to be decided upon, independent streams uh, basically need to kind of like converge together. It's like you have different rivers, and if you want to build a bigger flow and resolve that conflict, they all need to meet together at some point. It's generally called a policy window, and there's no guaranteed connection between a problem and solution. So often, policymakers have to kind of couple them together and like figure out a way to connect them together and present it to other receptive policymakers. So this way you can actually get what you want done and resolve this problem with the solution. But for the sake of this PowerPoint, we're going to be generally discussing the five structure, uh, structural elements of the MSF, uh, the three streams, the agenda window, and the policy entrepreneur. So we can kind of give a broad understanding and range of the analysis at hand. Uh, the first one is going to be the problem stream. Uh, the problem stream is kind of defined as the conditions that deviate from policymakers or citizens' ideal states and are seen as public in the sense that government action is needed to resolve them. Problems contain a perceptual and interpretive element because ideals and reality vary significantly. 
Um, there are multiple components to the problem stream in addition to focusing events, which are defined as sudden and relatively rare, and it can be potentially harmful and are known to generally the policymakers and public at the same time. So basically, like I said, like the previous event is like uh, like California fires or maybe even like an earth, like the, we had that um, tornado in Little Rock and basically is that could be seen in a way as a focusing event because it's sudden and occurring and both the policymakers and the public are aware of it at the same time. Um, people might see, uh, might come to see these conditions previously perceived as acceptable as a problem once learning that like other countries do it better. So it could be like healthcare and you could see that as a whole America is one of the lowest rated OECD outcomes in terms of healthcare. And it's our, the argument would be further made to like increase the healthcare outcomes relative to those other countries and cause like a, like resolve that perception of that issue. And a lot of these conditions are like going away out of the ideal perceptions of the citizens of the policymakers and don't all receive the same attention. And a lot of different conditions might be brought to a policymaker's attention, such as indicators with numerous indicators and in principle relevant for policymakers or public and focusing events and feedback. And all of these indicators as a whole kind of uh, give context to what, uh, uh, all give context to a situation until like a policymaker like our actor denies them as problems it's also easier to do so if the indicator changes for the worst because if people do not worry about it and it's not changed it's difficult to frame as a problem now so some people might see like different issues as not an issue or the like uh, the degree of relevance might be like okay this is not as relevant why are we paying attention to this and these are all kind of the issues that pop up within the problem stream <clears throat> There's also several types of focusing events, like we discussed earlier, like natural disasters or a lot of technical accidents or like a lot of violent crimes occurring all at once, as like in 2020 where we had a sudden um, a sudden inc increase in different um, what's the word uh, violent crimes or as a crime as a whole, and this creates a immediacy within the focusing event for different people paying attention to politics in those instances. Give me a second. So as a whole, these um, general themes are important and focusing events are going to be a lot of dictating of the political focus, but uh, framing is also important because how the problem is defined can like affect a lot of the solutions that are going to be generated and coupled in addition to like how uh, like the available availability of recent research in suggesting that framing and how it's going to derive and then the final thing is problem brokers can also be policy entrepreneurs, but not necessarily. And the key difference is that a problem broker only argues that something must be done about a certain issue while the policy entrepreneurs suggest the usually solution. So it's like the person who is pointing out the issue versus the person who says, okay, I acknowledge that the issue exists, but this is the solution to that problem. And it's important, oh, I apologize. It's important to uh, define when streams are ready for coupling. Um, as a whole, these streams should not pose difficulties because policy entrepreneurs are always able to frame the condition as a problem, then can be coupled with a favorite policy bristle. Basically is, um, the coupling is important, but if you have any amount of political savvy or ability to communicate, you can kind of resolve the issue pretty easily by the framing and the way you communicate and convey that. Uh, next is going to be the policy stream. Policy stream is a, a a collection of policy alternatives generated policy communities, which is mainly like a loose connection of civil servants, interest groups, academics, researchers, consultants, or as like the uh, PowerPoint says, the so-called hidden participants who engage in working out alternatives to policy problems of a specific policy field. And <clears throat> this is usually dominated by experts or researchers who all kind of like give general ideas about different policies and it all kind of floats around as the MSF kind of defines as the primable soup. It's like a general vague collection of ideas without any concrete substance to it. And basically within that soup, there's going to be a lot of engagement and argumentation and discussion <coughs> of these ideas until you kind of refine and like filter out the chaff and then eventually kind of find more viable policy alternatives 
in order and then be able to like start putting like uh, your weight behind different policy alternatives and then kind of like you'll see the different groups arising behind different ideas and from there these ideas just generally argue and can be like figured out more specifically. A type of typology of firms emerges from the different criteria and they deal generally for categories depending on the range and speed to which these ideas fully form. There's the quantum which is like a rapid development of new ideas, there's the immersion, which is like a gradual formation of new ideas, conversion is like old ideas like rapidly forming, and the gradualist is like in a slow processing of these generally existing policies and kind of generally extending them forward. Um, integration um, of different ideas affects the likelihood of types of evolution of ideas, such as the, like, like the less integrated policies have a different type of competitive nature while the more gradualist has a different process to work with and generally different like integration and evolution of ideas dictates the type of speed that's going to be occurring with those different issues and from there it, the framework here um as a whole like for msf can be useful but a bit simplistic analysis there's a, like a lot of wide range of factors can influence the likelihood of outcomes of the policy processes with in addition to like, acknowledging external influences um, and if they fulfill the criteria for survival as proposed by the MSF. Basically, these include technical feasibility, value acceptability, public acquiescence, and financial viability. There's also been other criteria suggested but are not as consistent but are not a consistent such as path dependence, meaning that if an idea strongly deviates from a previous policy path that is characterized by increasing returns, the chance of viability are extremely low. <clears throat> and there's some arguments to include this under technical feasibility. And basically is um, there's just an argument of kind of like where viability is going to be affected by these four criteria for survival and viability, if it's followed within all these criteria, it means like, you can potentially use that and then follow um, follow with the idea. If these all are fulfilled, then there's going to be a uh, understanding that the solution is going to be readily for coupling, coupling and <clears throat> sorry, and the usual. Um, basically, it's understanding that if none of if there is no criteria survival met and none are available as a policy alternative, then there's a kind of assumption within MSF that there is an unlikely expecting of a coupling of like a problem with a solution. So basically is if the policy solution doesn't run through the ringer of these different um, criteria, then there's the likelihood that it just not, it's not going to pass or follow through. So that's basically the idea that follows within that analysis. And finally, there's the political stream. And give me a second. I apologize for that. And finally, there's the political stream. It's located at the policy subsystem where basically political streams are located at the level of political. So it's basically is policy versus kind of the like arguments and kind of the social processes within po political frameworks. Three uh, major elements of this are the national mood, interest groups, and the government. Uh, national mood is just based over the notion that a fairly large number of individuals in a given country tend to think kind of generally along common lines, which swings a lot. So it's like you have like Republicans or Democrats, and generally they may be like affected by a national mood, such as like uh, after the 9-11 attacks, there's going to be a general um, instance and in preference for uh, pro-war in terms of Iraq and Iran and kind of going into the Middle East. <clears throat> and so a lot of government officials have to have this delicate perceptional balance and try to direct certain policy agendas through this national mood. More tools uh, such as like opinion polls can um, help with that perceptual ability by policymakers, but there has to be a care place to make sure that uh, there's not a confounding of these different uh, national moods and opinion polls so government officials don't accidentally like mess themselves up and get into a bad place in conflict with that national mood. Um, <coughs> and, oh wait, I apologize. 
An interest group is also a collection of people supporting or opposing an idea. Opposition or support by these groups hold a lot of political sway, and basically they foment a lot of influence through campaigns and also sometimes are members of the policy communities to help influence uh, different uh, viable alternatives. Um, there is an acknowledgement, though, that political influence and policy influence must be kept separate on some level because if there's just a perfect blending of it, it can kind of ble uh, like lose sight of the different routes that different policies go in order to direct access or direct solutions. Generally, for the political stream, the biggest battlegrounds are going to be on the government and legislature level and rely a he heavy amount on like t the bureaucracy and generally on like administrations for their affairs as a whole. Now, a question that forms is determining when a political stream is ready for the coupling, engaging uh, the likelihood of such options. Uh, so, like, each element doesn't need to point in the same direction for a policy proposal, but if they all collapse into each, it kind of becomes defined as party politics and government and legislatures are also argued to be the most relevant factors in the political stream due to their importance in kind of adopting the policy being, like, the direct enforcers of said policy. <clears throat> uh, stream can also be influenced by other stream, but, or... Uh, or completely ignore them as well. So it basically is the different streams can kind of flow into each other, but also can the political stream could be like, I don't care, I'm doing my thing. So it's basically an understanding that like having a political stream and requiring political uh, majority isn't quite as necessary. So the legislatures often only gather like uh, after the issue is on the agenda. So basically it is the policy process is going to be usually the dictating of the agenda while legislatures kind of only respond once it's kind of like aware and made on the agenda. And an important part of knowing when a political stream is ready for coupling is for like policymakers such as like congressmen or presidents to actively put their weight and power behind an idea or put the majority together for the issue. These are like called political entrepreneurs. They don't have to be members of a policy community or and be involved in the development of the policy proposal at an early stage, but they can command a lot of influence at some level in the process. It just kind of when they determine when they want to involve themselves is kind of the more important part. <clears throat> and once they're generally convinced of a project, they can use their individual like leadership position and can further idea within the government and work for the said proposal's adoption. So next is the agenda policy window. Uh, so even when all three streams are ready for coupling, uh, change isn't guaranteed. So there are specific points in time that may arise that these can kind of be occurring. So this is generally called a policy window, or um, it's a fleeting opportunity for advocates of proposals to push their pet solutions or to push attention to the, to the special problems. Basically, there are two primary windows called agenda windows and decision windows, which are getting basically is it's like one is getting issue on the agenda from opportunities to one is getting the policies in depth adopted it's kind of like the front runner and the back runner and one's like getting the issue on the agenda versus uh, getting the policies adopted it's like the first part and the second part and they can kind of be like the options appear at different moments they're complicated they're essentially like sometimes random in nature because it's hard to predict when exactly they're going to be occurring they can occur in a lot of different uh, important moments like elections, disasters, or like any significant shift in the national mood, or whenever there's a significant deterioration in like living conditions, any any like major uh, event occurring is usually a big indicator of potential coupling of policies within agenda or policy window. But there are also different streams in which uh, uh, Windows Open require different coupling needs like doctrinal or cup, uh, coupling or problem-focused advocacy forms out of the political stream with the main task of finding a problem to a given solution. So it's like you have a policy, <clears throat> but you want to resolve that policy with the solution. You're like, how do I, where do I focus this? How do I get this through? Like if you want to raise a greater awareness of fires, you're like, okay, well, I want to raise a greater awareness of fires, and you see the fires occurring in, like, California, you're like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to respond. And those are generally, like, that doctrinal coupling of problem-focused advocacy. And governments are constantly looking for problems to solutions, and there shouldn't be a diff difficult time because many conditions can be framed as problems. 
Next is a coupling response for problem stream windows like generally consists of consequential or problem surfing. Uh, the big difference is it's the duration and kind of the solution for it. So generally uh, these windows are going to be shorter and it makes it harder for working out a solution to the get set issue. So usually you kind of develop a pre-existing solution like linked to the problem. So it's like um, if you have like it's like COVID and basically is once that issue arises, you usually want to indicate like, oh, you can respond to this effectively. But in the instance is you will be like, OK, let's have a like uh, generally have um, a response team so we can kind of develop a solution quickly and respond it and kind of like you basically set up a mechanism without having to develop the entire policy tool. And generally policy entrepreneurs um, don't want to wait to sell solutions so they can also rely on like a third couple coupling technique technique called commissioning. And basically the policymaker as a whole actively selects appropriate solutions as a reaction to either of these streams windows. Problem comes is a predictability empirical applications are usually only occurring after such windows occur and they can be influenced and potentially time for but there is a difficulty and kind of a finesse that has to be wielded in terms of those issues next <clears throat> is the policy entrepreneurs uh generally these are advocates who are willing to invest their resources time energy reputation and money to promote a position and return for anticipated future gain in form of material uh purposeful purposive or solitary benefits and are usually key actors in the MSF framework. Um, basically, these include uh, policymakers, bureaucrats, academic journalists, representatives of interest group or members of the parliament, parliament, and they push proposals into the policy stream and adapt to find like generally broad support in the policy community can try to make them a viable alternative. Um, they usually also try to like put other projects they have with that stream so they can kind of capitalize on the available like political capital or like momentum in their favor. <clears throat> so generally they're in, like in way they're kind of like leaning and looking for any agenda window like openings and if there's not and if they don't respond to them then they lose the chance until the next one opens so but they can also they might also try to manipulate uh, the assumptions like problematic preferences or unclear technology to increase their chances or put themselves into a high greater position to have availability to agenda windows when they open. And there's a, sometimes a consistency and persistence that comes with policy entrepreneurs. And so they might try to find coupling to solutions and attach those problems to the solutions. And usually this is most effective when they can put all three streams together coupled as a single package but the, the success is not guaranteed and greater access to policymaker increases those chances of success. And a lot more receptiveness forms out of uh, like institute associated individuals um, to policymakers or entrepreneurs with more resources to push. So it's like greater connections or more money and time and re energy to wield and work towards that. So they'll use a lot of instruments to use such as problem framing, uh, affect priming, salami tactics, or use of symbols. It's like a lot of ways to kind of put it in the big majority focus of people's attention. And generally MSF argues that agenda sending is not primarily an access, like as we said before, it's not primarily an exercise in rational problem solving. Sometimes the problem exists with coupling a pre-existing policy that kind of fits, but a uh, problem comes is uh, there's also ones that have like political opportunities arise with new governments to get an agenda policy on the agenda or kind of put it with a new issue. These as these issues and these problems um, exist, but it doesn't mean that you can't kind of generate some general hypotheses that we'll be discussing next. So generally, um, the primary hypothesis is that agenda change can becomes more likely if A, a policy window opens, B, the streams are ready for coupling, and if C, a policy entrepreneur promotes the agenda change. So generally is kind of like the stars have to align for a person to kind of push a policy proposal out. <clears throat> and general, like, um, general applications within the hypothesis forms for the problem stream, it's uh, the argument is problem brokers uh, likely to be more successful framing a condition as a problem. The more an indicator changes to the negative, the more harmful a focusing event, and the more definitely a government program does not work as expected. Uh, the political stream uh, says that policy proposals that fit the general ideology of a government or the majority in a legislature have a better chance of gaining agenda status 
And the policy streams hypothesis uh, argues, if a policy proposal does not fulfill the selection of criteria, the likelihood of gaining agenda status and thus being coupled dec uh, be decreases significantly. So meaning all these doesn't fulfill these criteria, the likelihood of coupling decreases significantly. And as the integration of policy community decreases, it becomes more likely that entirely new ideas become viable policy alternatives. And I think I went the wrong way. There we go, sorry. And then fi finally, there's or like the last two, there's the policy window. There's a couple hypotheses that form. The policy window opens in the problem stream as a result of at least one of the following changes, changes of indicators, focusing events, or feedback. And the more condition puts a policymaker's re-election at risk, the more likely it is to open a policy window in the problem stream. The policy window opens in the political stream as a result of at least one of the following changes, changes in legislature, election of a new government, interest group campaigns, or a change in the national mood. And let me just do a quick adjustment. There we go. And finally, policy entrepreneurs are, are like more likely to couple the streams successfully during an open policy window if A, they have more access to core policymakers, and B, they are more persistent. And finally, uh, not finally, I, I keep saying finally, I apologize for that. There's some limitations that have been uh, generated in terms of criticisms, and generally there's a couple, there's like, are the streams really independent? Is the MSF clear enough to be proven wrong? Are policy entrepreneurs more rational than policymakers? Are elements lacking from MSF? And can hypotheses generated by the MSF be tested in medium to large in studies? And the first one is like, are the streams really independent? It's argued that streams could be viewed um, as independent, if not completely independent, but the criticism comes is there's a blurred line between streams and the potential interconnectedness of said streams. And it's argued that it could be more fruitly viewed as interdependent and change in one stream can trigger or reinforce changes in another. And it basically this argument goes on to say that the assumptions of MSF are kind of a simplification of reality. Next is MSF clear enough to be proven wrong. Uh, the claim is that core concepts lack clear definitions do not generate falsifiable hypotheses. And more recently, uh, there have been more explicit forms of the MSF hypotheses and this issue kind of forms out of the metaphorical narrative language of the approach posing more intricate problems and like things like stream windows, streams, windows, pyramidal soups, criteria survival, national mood, and focusing events are somewhat difficult to measure and seem to invite storytelling rather than rigorous empirical analysis. And there are proposed methods to provide additional conceptual groundwork that permits more precise analysis when individual streams are ready for coupling, but it's kind of a complicated question to resolve as a whole. And next is, are policy entrepreneurs more rational than policymakers? There's some arguments that uh, there's some arguments that assuming policymakers and entrepreneurs are do not easily fit together. And there's some assumed assumption that policymakers don't have clear uh, don't have clear preferences, and it's assumed that policy entrepreneurs know exactly what they want, and they want namely to get the the proposals adopted. This is inconsistent, but. This is an inconsistent framing and is a criticism of usually leveraging an MSF, but there's some contradictions can be resolved, and there's also concerns over portraying entrepreneurs as too clever, as if like a too simplistic of a framing of them. Are like uh, are elements lacking from MSF? Another criticism is that it lacks some elements like relevance, political institutions, path dependence, and mass media. Uh, like although only tried rarely, nothing in MSF per se, precludes integration of elements of these into the framework. Uh, there's also institutions affecting integration of policy communities and define who's in agreement a political entrepreneur must obtain to steering to such decision coupling. And path dependence can also be understood as a criteria survival that affects a proposal's chances of becoming a viable policy alternative. But a major one is also media and like how different m media institutions can influence the perspective and the ideas around those issues. Like uh, Fox News, to C uh, CNN, or MSNBC. Those are major institutions that affect political perception. And ignoring that can be a major issue. And finally, can hypotheses generated by the MSF be tested in medium to large in studies? Basically, it's understood 
is primarily MSF has been dealing with case studies and it would benefit most from large scale uh, empirical in studies. So basically it's get more logical regression, get more like empirical analysis, and this can kind of uh, validate a more usefulness of MSF. But until this moment, we're still relying consistently more on case studies and smaller sample sizes, which makes the utility and the applicability much more difficult as a whole. So finally, we come to the conclusion, basically, is there's a lot of academic on debate on MSF, and it has a lot of potential routes for it. There's also a significant amount of suggestions for theoretical advancement of MSF, and as a whole, there's a lot of steps that need to be taken to further refine and address criticism in addition to furthering empirical applications. So as a whole, this is generally, like, generally my readings and analysis of the uh, MSF framework, in addition to kind of like the general ideas and criticisms around MSF as a whole and so how it can kind of like be useful as an analysis in terms of the Benville policing project and just help us like kind of frame everything in terms of an analyzing. So yeah.